So have you ever like bought a curriculum without doing much research about it? You just kind of went off of other people's opinions and recommendations. That's pretty much what I did recently. And I want to just take a peek at it with you and see how I will be incorporating it into our homeschool. So let's get to it. And if you're new here, I'm Suin from the Homeschool Front blog, and this is my YouTube channel, Life in the Trenches, where I share all things about homeschooling and how you can make it simple and easy. And as some of you know, I used to be a middle school history teacher, and now I homeschool my three kids, and they are, <sighs> gotta think about this, 12, 8, and 5. I have no clue. <laughs> about this curriculum. All I know, it's the simplest writing program you'll ever use. And I know that we use Brave Writer. I've mentioned that before, and that's more for creative writing, in my opinion, and to find the writer's voice. Whereas structure, this is where this comes in when it's when we talk about writing structure. I know, according to like Charlotte Mason and Brave Writer, like if you do copy work and dictation, then your kids will learn writing mechanics through that. But the thing is that we don't. We don't do that because <laughs> I don't know, we just don't, it just never really fit into what we we do for whatever reason. It's not something that I really enjoy doing. So this was highly recommended by Kayla from Ode to Abode, as well as our homeschool charter school. So all the teachers at our charter school are homeschool teachers or homeschoolers as well. And so they recommend what they use, which is awesome. So let's dive in and look at Write by Number and see how I'm going to use it for next year. Not not next school year, but come January. <laughs> because right now we're not really homeschooling because holidays, chaotic, chaotic mess. I mean, we do do some stuff, but it's just, I don't want to introduce something new when our schedule and our routines are kind of off kilter. We'll wait to start this in January when things slow down again. So let's get to it. So there's two books. We have the teacher book and we have the student book. And this is something that, be can, that can be used throughout their education. And you can start when they're super young, you can start whenever. And a little background about the author, Lorena Townsend. She has taught writing for over 30 years. She's a credentialed teacher. She has a master's, I think, in English. She homeschooled her five kids. She tutored um, children in writing, and she also taught in the high school and college levels. So she's like a writing expert, in my opinion. And this is something that can, you know, it doesn't have to be just used by homeschoolers. It can be used by anyone. Like if you are a public school parent and you have a struggling writer, you can use this book. If you are an educator, you can use this in your classroom. Write by number is supposedly the simplest writing program you'll ever use. And you know me, I'm all about simple and easy. So anything that's simple and easy, it appeals to me because I think homeschooling does not have to be challenging and difficult. We don't need like a ton of curriculum. Writing is just, I don't know, teaching. I mean, I love writing, but teaching writing, like the writing mechanics is not something that I enjoy. And I've tried like IEW, we've tried IEW, we've tried other types of teaching curriculum and they just never really worked for our style. And I feel like this is going to be helpful because it's nice, from what I understand, it's nicely structured. Here we have the scope and sequence. So we have different stages, one through 12. This is about writing structure, writing appearance, grammar, usage and mechanics and stage one. So I'm going to start, even though my son is not, my 12 year old is not at stage one and my five and eight year old are at stage one. We're all, I'm going to start all of them at the same time, at the same stage. And I know my oldest son, he's going to progress very quickly while my younger ones will probably spend more time doing this. I don't know if it's like an everyday thing or what, I don't know. Stage one, a first power sentence, so overview. So we have goals, objectives, readiness, assessment, differentiation, cross-curricular integration. I like this, in any subject requ requiring a written sentence, ask students to write it using stage one, write by number requirements. And so one of the reasons why I thought this was great is because I could use it with other subjects. I'm all about integrating subjects because this just makes things a lot easier rather than having to do a bunch of different subjects things. So history, something I love to teach. So most likely we'll incorporate this with our history. Maybe with science too. 
We'll see. So we have common core standards, if that's something you follow, or if you're like a public school teacher, you need that. We have teacher resources and student materials. Here on the side, you'll see like the paragraph structure. So these, this is the write by number. This is the number part of write by numbers. So we are uh, stage one, we're doing a first power sentence and we have goals here and we have examples here. We have how to teach stage one, dependent learners, independent learners. So for my two younger kids, they're dependent learners. So I would follow this guideline where my independent learners, my oldest son, he could do this on his own easily. So they recommend for independent learners spend 15 minutes per day writing first power sentences until they, re they meet the requirements to move to stage two. So assignments, evaluation, evaluation checklist. So, I mean, there's a lot here to read through, but I, you just, you know, stream a movie and just have your kids like zone out on tech for a while while you go through all this and see how you're gonna use it in your homeschool. You don't have to be constantly educating your kids. Like, you know, just take a break. Stage two. So obviously stage one is a very easy stage two. We have the one, two, two paragraph. Again, it's pretty much lined up exactly the same. We have assignments here, worksheets I'm gonna help teach, evaluation, student samples, special needs, when to move to stage three. This is quite simple. Stage three, the one, two, three, two, three paragraph. She explains what these are. I'm not gonna go into detail because I, I don't know yet. I have to read this. Like I said, this is the first time I'm looking at this. And so you are viewing this with the same eyes that I am. <laughs> so the layout's pretty much the same for the teacher book. And I don't want you to get too bored. So I'm just gonna zoom through this real quick. And as you can see, the different stages. All the way to stage 12. In the back here, we have the appendices and we have, I guess these are kind of like worksheets or answers, answers. And then we have quick references here. And we have Glossary, a glossary. That is it for the teacher book. Now let's quickly look at the student book. It's hard covered, so it's gonna last a while with your kids. So you can use it with all your kids, like until they finish stage 12. Here, table of contents. They have worksheets at the end, quick reference and glossary again. They're talking about the book borders. So on the left side are all the ways you will learn to vary the structure of your paragraphs and essays. And on the right side are all the sentence patterns. Each sentence pattern has its own number and color. So a first power sentence. So they give examples, worksheets that might help you, and then assignment. Just have like a notebook, I guess. And then you would just write the date and then you write the sentence and then the parent would correct it. And after the parent corrected the sentence, then you would copy, the student would copy the sentence correctly. And I kind of like this because like with creative writing, you don't really want to edit the creative writing because I think that just really takes away the power of their the writer's voice. Whereas this is, you know, you start out really simply and it's just, it's like okay to edit these, I feel like, because the kids aren't so attached to it. Like with creative writing, they're attached to their story. And with the this, this type of writing, they're not really attached to the words that they're writing down. I mean, that's just how I, I'm feeling about this curriculum right now. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I think maybe I should make a future video where I go back and I let you know whether this worked for us or not. Check your assignment. Why write instead of erase? And then we move on to stage two. And they explain, we call this a one, two, two paragraph. And it looks like this. First power, second power, second power. I have two toys. First I have a doll, second I have a ball. Second power signal ideas. Paragraph examples. So they're writing like short little paragraphs is what they're doing. Ordinal numbers, student samples. I like how they have samples. Writer's block, kids can get stuck. They don't know what to write about. So having samples helps them learn right. I don't think we'll see there any problem with that. Assignment, worksheets that might help. Written sample, check your assignment. And then we move on to stage three. And then again, they 
tell you why it's called a one, two, three, two, three paragraph right here. Yeah, I'm liking this. It is simple. It is, does look very easy to use. Um, you know, just write it in our little notebook and we're good to go. So I'm just gonna quickly zoom through this because I don't want you to be too bored. One of the reasons why I wanted to use this curriculum is because my oldest child, he is very creative and he has a wonderful writer's voice and he loves like creative writing. But the writing structure, like in the past when I've tried to edit like his creative writing, he got very defensive and I wanted to do something that did not offend him in some way. And I, I mentioned how he used Night Zookeeper. Night Zookeeper really sparked that love for writing in him, but he didn't really like the critiques the online teachers would give. And so he um, kind of ignored them. And so, yeah. <laughs> so we need to crack down because he's gonna get to high school soon. And I just want him to be ready for that because I think he is capable of being a better writer. If you're wondering what these colors are right here, correlate with a number, which I believe correlates with one of these numbers, so the sentence structure. So if you don't want a physical copy, she does offer a online version, a digital version of this and get a, a deeper look into how to use the curriculum on her website, Right by Numbers. I'll leave the links down below. And this is not sponsored or I don't have an affiliate link or anything like that. I just wanted to share this with you because a few of you asked about it and I just wanted to give you a heads up of what it's like. If you found value in this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. My goal, I have a goal of reaching a thousand subscribers. I know that's not much, but for me, that's enough. A thousand subscribers by at the end of the year, which is quickly approaching. So if please subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you're watching this after the new year, subscribe anyway, because I'd love to have you join my little homeschool family here on YouTube. And if you're interested in seeing how we use Night Zookeeper for creative writing, make sure you check out this video here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.